Hey guys, um, here's my little explanation for what's going on in question 6b. Just a side note, Dr. Marie also said that he may ask for different values in the formula. So practice changing the subject of the formula. And yeah, he may ask us to calculate mz, which is just basically the m value. He may ask us to calculate the time that it takes T1 to reach a certain M value. And yeah, so just go look at those things. Okay, so back to the question. What everything essentially means is M is the value of maximum magnetization. So if we look at the graph, that is a point in the graph when it starts flattening out of here. And we can see here that M naught is essentially reached at one, two, three, four, five seconds. And if you go look at that website that's linked to this, they will actually explain that to you that at a time of five seconds, the value essentially equals the M naught. Okay, so M naught is our maximum magnetization. M is a percentage of M naught. So our M value as it states basically over here, will always be a percentage of M0, never quite actually reaching the M0 value. Because when you reach M0, then basically those are going to equal each other, they're going to cancel out, and you're going to end up not being able to calculate the value of T1. T is our time in seconds. Please note the small letter T. E is something called the Euler number, which is the base of the natural logarithm, which allows you to work in ln value as well. And T1 is, by definition, even given in the question, just the time required for m to equal 63% of m0. So, if we look at the question, this is what we were all given. And what you basically need to take from this is that our value of M, so this value over here is going to be 63%, and it's going to be 63% of this value, which would then be the full value or 100%. So if we look over here, our given values are M at 63%, M0 is at 100%, E is that constant I told you about. T is one second and we are looking for the value of T1. So there's our formula again. And just with all the numbers plopped in, we've essentially got the 63 is equal to 100. Brackets 1 minus E minus 1 seconds put in over there and over T1. So the first thing I did was I divided both sides by 100 in order to get rid of the 100 in front of the brackets over there. That gives me then a 0 0.63, the 63 divided by 100. And then it takes the brackets away so that I've got the 1 minus E on the one side over here. I then did a little bit of a swap over. So I took the E over towards the left. So the negative became positive. And the 0 0.63 goes over to that side, becoming a negative. So we end up with this over here. And if you just simply subtract the 0.63 from the 1, that will then give you an answer of the 0 0.37 over here. Next step would be to use a logarithm in order to get that E down onto a base value so that we can use the exponents of the E on their own. So what I've done here basically is just say that log base E 0 0.37 will then equal that value up there. And this, if you just write it out fully, is essentially log over 1. So I just wrote this out so it's a little easier to see what I'm going to do next. And once you've got that going, you simply cross multiply. You end up with this over here, the minus... 1 is equal to that, and then you simply divide by this log value over here, and then you get the T1 all on its own over here, which is what we've been looking for. You put that whole thing into your calculator, and you end up with a number of 1 seconds at T1. Now, uh, I spoke about lins, so this is the other way to do it. And basically what the LN button on your calculator means is that 
log e is the natural log and that becomes essentially ln so instead of actually typing in log base e you can simply type in the ln button and then the number afterwards so if you look at your calculator i know i've got the very unpopular uh, sharp calculator but essentially there are the two ways you can do it you've got the ln button over there and then normally the log would be base 10 so in other words in order to get the log base e you'd have to go through the whole process of going second function that log over there and then you would actually have to go alpha and select the small letter e in order to get base e but to do the lin thing is very very simple you simply go ln that automatic automatically means log base e and then you just put in the 0 0.37 and yeah it's simple as that that's the same as saying log base e 0 0.37 and you simply put all those things into your calculator and that gives you your answer so let's just have a quick yeah, look at that being done so Let's take the let's take the lin value. It's going to be easier. So for the lin value, I would go my one over, oops, negative one over lin zero point three seven, and that would give us the answer of the one point zero zero five seven blah blah blah, which equals to about one point zero one, and yeah. That's how you do that last question. And if you have any questions, just send me a WhatsApp.